Hey, it's uh, Marco Catania again, uh, representing Charles III University. Uh, another study aid on service transition. And this time we're going to look at the value that service transition has to offer to your business. Again, you're looking at like a familiar model by now. Uh, we started in service strategy, uh, mapping out our direction. Uh, service design has created a nice blueprint for us, what the service is going to look like, the blueprint known as the service design package. And it's now up to service transition to actually like build and test and implement the service and to move it into the live environment. Okay, that's what service transition is all about. Okay, let's look at some uh, value statements that we can make for service transition. It says here, improved cost, timing, resource and risk estimation. Because we're following a process of like change and release management, are we creating our schedules, we're planning for our resources, over time we should be getting at doing that. That's the whole thing. Eh? After each change, if we take like a lessons learned, we should, be get, we should be doing it a little bit better in the next change. So there's definitely like, uh, over time you should be getting better in doing the same things. I think that is like an, a universal truth. Uh, more successful change. An assessment is done by the right stakeholders. Uh, as part of your so-called change advisory board meetings, uh, you'll be inviting people from the business, you'll be inviting people like from IT, from suppliers, from partners and users. Uh, you're inviting those people that can really make like a valid judgment on whether or not the change is needed and is actually going to provide value to the business. Uh, proper testing, uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, typically uh, doing proper testing beforehand is a lot cheaper than trying to like fix all the mistakes uh, if you haven't done proper testing. So testing is definitely going to like create more successful change in your organization. Change is easier to adopt and follow. The nice thing is like if you've got proper processes like change and release management in place, then the workflows that these processes like use, they more or less like increase the process efficient, uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, you know exactly what to do, who is doing it, when it's done, what needs to be done, uh, what the process is that needs to be followed. So you get like less deviations uh, from normal processes. Uh, approvals, uh, uh, vitally important, uh, approvals are provided at the appropriate levels. It is now clear who can, who can actually authorize uh, what type of changes, what type of releases, and who's actually going to be like part of that picture. So it's, 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 it's I think, uh, critical to know uh, who do I need to contact if I want to, for example, like roll out a new application or roll out a new update or uh, roll out the latest version of like the fire definitions. It needs to, it needs to be clear who's actually be part of that process. Yeah, service transition is a mind-boggling, fantastic volume. It's one of my favorite volumes uh, of the five idle volumes. Okay, it says here also reuse of assets across projects and services. Uh, it's all about reusing your skills, your knowledge, your people, your tools, your applications, your hardware, your, your manuals, your documentation. Uh, reuse, reuse, reuse and also improve. And, and the whole thing, is it, it means that like if I've done like one change, I should be able to grab all that knowledge and grab all those skills and actually reapply them for the next change. And again, don't, don't start from scratch. So there's a fantastic opportunity here to learn as an organization and to become like a knowledgeable organization. Um, it says here, reduce delays from unexpected clashes slash dependencies. You've got this fantastic tool called the change schedule. And the change schedule can be used as a communication tool between IT and the business. Uh, where IT is scheduling their approved changes for implementation and the business is also scheduling their business related changes. And hopefully that will prevent, for example, like conflicts and uh, hopefully uh, you actually it's clear to you what those dependencies between IT and the business really are. Um, also, um, if you do change management properly, uh, thou shall always have a back out slash fallback plan in place. In other words, uh, if something goes wrong during the change implementation, you should have a means to move back to the original situation, uh, which is typically known as like following your back out or fallback plan. Um, reduced effort spent managing test and pilot environments. Again, it's about learning, learning, and learning, and learning, and learning. I can't say that enough. And if you've like built one test environment and certain things went wrong, you document what went wrong and how to actually like fix it. So the next time when you have to build like a similar, uh, a similar, a similar, a similar test environment, again, you can then take your lessons learned and actually avoid making those mistakes again. So it actually gives you like a, a service transition 
it puts a lot of emphasis on like uh, creating a procedural and repeatable environment. Yeah, highlighting some more service transition uh, value uh, opportunities or statements. It says here improved setting of expectations and, and really managing expectations is so important uh, if you're providing services. Uh, because you're like um, running all these like meetings uh, such as like the change advisory board meetings, uh, the emergency change advisory board meetings and the configuration control board meetings, you're actually giving other people an opportunity to sit around a table with IT and therefore you can actually communicate with them like often like face to face, hey this is how it's going to work and this is how long it's going to take, are you okay with that? So you actually have a fantastic opportunity s to set all the expectations on the spot. Uh, also, it says only value-adding changes are approved. Can, if you have the right people around the around the table, eh, from an IT point of view, you go like, hey, I want to upgrade my router, and the business goes like, well, is there really a business case? And they go, mm, not really. Okay, well, then we don't do it. So y you really, at, at some stage, you, you will see you only start to actually approve uh, those changes where you can really justify the value of those changes to the business. Uh, increased confidence. Uh, again, typically, I would say processes and a process culture uh, typically, it forces you to follow strict rules. It means you'll have left deviations on like how we normally work as an organization, and there's that like y you end up with like a less like of an ad hoc culture where, where people just like uh, go with their go with their feelings and go with the flow. I'm in a bad mood today, so let's make some like unauthorized changes. Th that's not what you want. You want a clear, strict process where people know exactly what to do, where to go, and how to escalate if it doesn't go properly. Okay. Uh, maintainable and cost-effective services. Uh, in the end, if you do change management, release management, uh, knowledge management, configuration management, if you do all these processes properly um, and you, 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 you know exactly what to do, you map out who's doing what, then you also find a reduced duplication of effort where you don't have like all these people trying to do the same thing. Uh, you don't have like 50 people all trying to maintain the same data and, and populate the similar databases. So you're actually really about, uh, if I think service transition, it's about maximizing benefits and minimizing the cost of actually achieving your results. That's what service transition, I think, for me in a nutshell, is all about. You, another practice what you preach exercise for you guys out there. Um, it's about understanding the value, of course, of service transition. And the question is like, do you test drive a car before buying it? Okay, do you test drive a car before buying it? Uh, I want you to think, or I'm asking you to think of at least like five more examples uh, where testing and or like uh, inspecting uh, or like uh, doing inspections have proven their value to you and or your business. Uh, I'll give you some examples. Uh, are you doing pest control before you buy a house? Are you quality rating university before you actually enroll? Um, do you create like an image of, of an organization? Uh, do, you, do you get like, uh, do, you, do you start to like collect some information about an organization before you actually join them or you go for an interview? <laughs> are you folding your parachute before you jump? And are you like uh, checking and testing a user interface of a new tool before you actually buy it? Okay, think about some of those statements. Think about like how important and test or how important testing slash inspecting is for you and your business. Okay, what would a study aid be without a sample question? Question being, which one of the following statements is the correct one? Answer A, service transition has limited interfaces with service design. Answer B. Service transition supports optimal reuse of available resources such as people and tools. Answer C. Testing is done under the umbrella of service strategy and service operation. And last but not least, answer D. Service transition is responsible for delivery of the service design package. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about the answer. Okay. And the correct answer is answer B. Service transition supports optimal reuse of available resources such as people and tools. Okie dokie, so what are we going to do in the next topic? Um, we're going to account for the main goals and objectives of uh, another volume, another idle volume known as service operation, uh, looking at like the day-to-day -day processes. Hey, for now, live long and prosper, uh, see you later alligator, and rock around crocodile.